Welcome to today's show. One of the greater joys of the Bowtie Guy's life, it's my exploration of the world around me. I enjoy seeing things that I just can't see back at home. I love learning about the people that may look different, believe different, sound different, and think differently than me. Sometimes different is okay. Diversity throughout this earth fascinates me. I've seen swamps, mountains, glaciers, deserts, and islands. I've seen volcanoes that have erupted before my very eyes. I've been to places where people spoke Creole, Spanish, and different accents of English. So today, let's learn about the study of the earth and how people that live on earth, how they use it. Let's learn about geography. Exactly how far is Sydney from Hong Kong? Huh? Or from Chicago? And Africa? Exactly what are its true dimensions? Its precise position on the face of the Earth? Ooh. Should the coastline be here or here? For centuries, ground surveyors with various surveying instruments have been slowly fitting small parts into the puzzle. They can make maps that will contribute to the welfare of mankind. From them, boundary commissions may resolve age-old border disputes. Engineers will be able to determine the proper route for highways, railroads, and plan water conservation projects. Whoa. Oh, oh, we're on? <laughs> Welcome! Today we're going to be talking about geography, baby! Geography, Greek word, geo, prefix, meaning world, and graphy, the suffix, meaning right. So, geography, we're going to be studying the world, the earth, and the people that use that earth, the earth. Yeah. Hi -ya! <laughs> Way in the future. The five themes of geography include place, location, human and environmental interaction, human movement, and regions. The globe that is this earth has a belt size. Did you know that? The belt size of the Earth is the equator, baby. The equator is an imaginary line that wraps itself around the Earth and it divides it into two hemispheres. A hemisphere is, well, if you look at the word itself, it's Greek. Hemi meaning half. Sphere meaning, well, sphere. And so half of a sphere is a hemisphere. We divide it into the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. And sometimes people even refer to it as western hemisphere and eastern hemispheres.
What's the difference between a map and a globe? Don't think too long, because I'm about to tell you. A map is two-dimensional. It's a picture of a place that describes the place using different symbols. A globe is three-dimensional. In this case, you're probably thinking of a sphere, and you'd be correct. Yeah. To most people, the world is a well-mapped globe. Take Australia. Men have learned its approximate shape and size, but they are not quite sure how it fits into the picture. <laughs> Let me think for a second. So the belt size of the earth is going to be the equator, right? Well, I guess so. Well, so the equator divides the earth into the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Well, how do we divide it into the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere? The Prime Meridian, of course! And photographing the globe is not a one-man job. Because the Earth is a sphere, we have something that's called time zones. The Earth is separated into different sections called time zones. And there's 24 different time zones. Well, why does this occur? Well, because the Earth is tilted. And the way that the sunlight hits the Earth and the Earth is rotating at the same time, Different parts of the sun hits different parts of the earth at different times of the day. So when you're in Hong Kong, it's going to be a different time of day than what it is in New York City. You feel me? Yeah. Three. There's three different types of maps, homie. What we're going to be talking about are political maps, physical maps, and cultural maps. Political maps are human-made divisions. We shouldn't have divisions because human-made divisions that divide sections of the earth. Now, these lines create countries, counties, states, um, and continents, if you will. Now, let's talk about physical maps. Physical maps describe the natural physical features that are included on this beautiful earth. We're talking about rivers, mountains, valleys. You know what I'm saying. Now, the cultural maps describe the ethnicities, the religions, the languages of the people that reside within the land on earth. You know what I'm saying? Did you know that people use technology to find maps? You're probably uh, sitting there yeah. and the cricket's going grr, 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 grr. Of course you do. We Here we are in the 2000s. Now, you use something, something, I know it's going to be hard for some of you to understand, but a cell phone. Yeah! So, some people can use something called GPS. Do you know what GPS stands for? I know I do. Global Positioning System. It's something that can pinpoint the exact coordinates, the exact intersection. Hiya! of lines and lat latitude and lines of longitude that come together and form that pinpoint that can show where you are. Yeah. One thing you should understand is that geography is the study of the earth and the people that live within it and how they use it to their advantage and disadvantage sometimes, but maps have changed over time. Why? Because technology's changed and we have understood and figured out most of the world that is above the water. Now, you got to understand, below the water, that's still, that's like going to the moon. We still don't understand the depths, like the Mariana Trench, that is 20, 30,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. There's a lot to be explored on this earth, but maps in the world of geography can help us better understand this world. Use that brain. It might do you some good. Ha! Precision visual photography is used to produce detailed topographic maps and charts of extensive areas by the science of photogrammetry. Oh, yeah. So you get a gift. We're going to interpret some maps. Let's take a look at Horton Land right here. So if you look at the top left, you see a map key. Now, these symbols right here indicate certain things that are located within the map and they help you understand as to what they are. So symbols are icons. They're used on maps to represent real objects or places. 
Symbols can be simple dots such as Booyah City, Zulu City, and Boomerang City. Now, if you look at the little star inside of the circle, you see that Love City is the capital of Horton Land. Also, wherever there's a V, that's a valley. Where there's an M, well, there's a little mountain range right there. And wherever there's a little symbol that looks like a tree, well, that's probably a forest in that area. A little straight line, that's going to be a road. And if it has the lines that's chopped through it, that is going to be a railroad. If you look at the very bottom, you'll see a compass rose that helps us understand our directions. So we have north, south, east, west, but also the intermediate directions, northeast, northwest, southwest, and southeast. The map scale that you see at the bottom is interesting in that it measures about 10 miles. But if you look, that's not really 10 miles. That's what a scale is. A scale gives us the opportunity to see something that is much bigger than we can understand and put it into simpler terms. So if you look at Buya City and Love City, the capital, you can see that they're about how many miles apart? Well, if you guessed five, you'd be correct. What about Love City and Zulu City? That's approximately 10 miles. But if you look at Love City and Boomerang City, you're going to have to double it. So you're going to have to use the scale to see that that's about twice the distance between Love City and Zulu and then Love City and Boomerang. It's about 20 miles. Now, if you look at the funky little letters at the top and the numbers on the side, it makes what is called a grid. These are coordinate points that you can find a particular place on a map. D3 gets us pretty close to Boomerang City, and this would quickly identify certain places in Horton Land for someone that is new to the city or new to the land. If you look at the bottom, that is a date and a copyright, but it shows when that map was drawn.